in this lecture, I'm going to use uh, four examples to illustrate how we generated Fourier series representation of a given function. In this example, the given function is x for x in the range between negative one to positive one. The period is two. If we sketch it, you notice this is simply a straight line. And uh, outside the range, like we discussed earlier, the representation is going to repeat itself. So we can sketch what we can expect when we use series representation. It has period equal to two. If we use the three formula we derived in the last session for a n, a n, and the b n, we can integrate and obtain the results. Uh, in the deviation, we notice um, we will need to refresh our scale of integration by parts. In addition, the nature of n, even or odd n, will have effect on the result. If we see cosine n pi here, it can be positive or negative one, depending on the nature of n. After we obtain the three coefficient, we can put it into the Fourier series representation and uh, state the representation like this. Finally, let me remind you last time we discussed even or odd f. If uh, the given function f is uh, either a even or an odd function, the deviation of the Fourier ex series expansion can be significantly simplified. Using this as an illustration, the given function by looking at the sketch is obviously an odd function. It's a symmetric with respect to the origin. Therefore, we, before, even before we do this integration, we already can expect a naught is zero, b naught is zero. We only have to do this portion. After we derive this uh, Fourier series expression, we can go to MassCAD to illustrate um, how MassCAD can help us on the Fourier series representation in graphic form. Uh, we, based on the definition of F, we can get a sketch. Then we can enter the Fourier coefficients. The three formula are just exactly the same as what we defined uh, in the last session. Then we can define the 10 term sum and the three times sum as illustration we can see the actual function is uh, from negative one to positive one. And uh, that dash line represent the three ten sum. This uh, solid line represent 11 ten sum. Obviously the 11 ten sum vibrates with a lower magnitude except at the two end. Um, so the more 
returns are included, the better the result it will be. Alternatively, this coefficient can be entered based on the hand-derived coefficient. This is my hand-derived result, and uh, we can generate the same thing. It will save computer time, but uh, of course the hand-derived uh, exercise will take longer time. Let's look at the second example. If we are given function like this, negative one for x between negative one and zero, positive one for x between zero and one, then we can sketch it. And uh, since the period is two, we know it's going to repeat itself outside the range of uh, negative one to positive one. And uh, at the outset, I'd like to remind you, this is an odd function because it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Therefore, we can expect the value of a now to be zero. A sub n is also zero. Um, but I did this anyway to convince myself I can generate the result. For b sub n, we do have to uh, estimate, we have to hand derive it. And then notice toward the end, we also face similar issues. Cosine m pi x can be positive one or negative one depending on the nature of m. Once we get these coefficients, we can put it in the standard form of uh, Fourier series representation. And then we can uh, use a software to demonstrate how good the result is. Uh, in this worksheet, I use standard form of a Fourier coefficient that I get the result. Uh, this worksheet also demonstrates once we create one, we can do numerous problems. Um, the third example, if uh, we are given function like this, zero between negative pi to zero, f is pi over two for x between zero and uh, uh, half pi. And then uh, f value is zero for x between pi over two and a pi. This is neither a even function or an odd function. So we have to estimate all a n a n and the b n uh, by using the standard formula and then we get an expression and then we can go to computer to see the result and uh, i have two worksheets for the same problem, one I use the uh, Fourier coefficient we discussed last lecture, or we can use the hand derived result, it turned out to be exactly the same. And uh, the fourth example is important and that can save us time. The problem is defined as this f of x equal to x squared for x between zero and the two pi and the period is two pi. So if we sketch it, we see 
this is the curve defined by the problem. Outside the X range, the function f will repeat itself. And then if we insist to use the standard Fourier coefficient formula, we're supposed to put this f inside the formula. Look at the, uh, the issue now. f of x equal to x squared for x between 0 and the pi, that's well defined. But uh, for the negative pi to 0 side, uh, we have to obtain this expression. If you know how to shift a function, this portion of the function on the left is essentially this function shift by 2 pi. So we can use x plus 2 pi squared as the representation of this function. So this is the first thing we learn from this example, how to express a function which is a shift to the left. We simply add that shift to get this expression. Um, so then if we use this piecewise continuous f inserted into the standard form for Fourier coefficient, we get this three expression. Look at the integrals. We have to break the integral into two parts because f is uh, piecewise continuous. We have to integrate the function essentially this portion and this portion. Look at the first integral. If we insist to use this approach, we have to expand x plus 2 pi squared. So we get three terms for this uh, integral. For this integral, for a n, after we expand this, we get three integral for the this particular integral also. And the first integral represent x squared times cosine n x. We have to use integration by parts two times to get rid of x squared. So computational wise, it's rather complicated. So uh, if we have an option, we hope we can avoid it. Indeed, we have a option because we know the periodic property of the function. We can use the representation from negative pi to pi. Alternatively, we can use the same function for x between 0 to 2 pi to get the Fourier coefficients. Uh, in this case, the Fourier coefficient become something like this. They are continuous, all the three integral involve continuous function, so we don't have to break it up. Uh, so uh, these three integrals are relatively simple than this group. Uh, if we know how to change the integration limit uh, for the periodic f, then um, these are manageable, so I hand the driver 
like we said, we have the use integration by parts two times. Then I got Fourier representation based on this result. Then uh, I can demonstrate the uh, result Fourier coefficient um, and uh, I got the result is the long dash line represent the definition of the function um, and at the last worksheet I demonstrate that uh, if I use uh, the complicated format No, I didn't use the complicated format. I still use the same um, definition of the Fourier coefficient. Then I simply want to demonstrate. Indeed, this portion of the function, left-hand side, is identical to this. So this demonstrates the method works it does repeat itself. We don't really have to use complicated expression for the Fourier coefficient. We can use uh, the expression by assuming it's a periodic, so we only need to integrate uh, from zero to two pi for the Fourier coefficients. Uh, this concludes my lecture and uh, in the next section I'm going to discuss uh, uh, the strand lovely problem, or etc.